could you explain a bit about female and male load and unload solenoids? These are our male load and unload, and this is our female unload. So the separation between these, you'll see these are implemented on a, say an RTAA style compressor. So these are your male load and unload. These are controlling a slide valve, which is internal to the compressor. And the female unloader is controlling a bypass. It's not a slide valve, it is an internal bypass. And they serve very, very different functions for the compressor. So let's start with the female unloader. A female unloader is used at the startup cycle. So when the compressor is first started up, the female unloader is de-energized. This valve here is allowed to move and we can bypass discharge gas back to suction. So over here we have this suction chamber where uh, we're moving around the screw bolts and you can kind of see their separation here. These are internal ports inside the compressor. These are not visible things you can see by looking at it. All this is, is part of the machining that gets done on the compressor. So we have a valve in here that's at the discharge side of our screw bolts. Okay, these are screw bolts. You have male, female. Uh, these are what compresses our refrigerant. All these extra lines and stuff through here is part of your oil circuit. So what the female unloader is doing is it is opening this bypass and allowing discharge gas to be rerouted back into the suction gas. What that allows us to do is have an unloaded start beyond what the, the slide valve can do. So the slide valve at startup will be in the fully unloaded position. Even with the slide valve in a fully unloaded position, we can still have issues where the if the female unloader is not opening the internal bypass, we can either pull the evaporator down too quickly, which will cause low pressure trips, or we could end up pushing into a overcurrent in some cases and tripping out on motor overcurrent. Tripping out on the low pressure is typically what I see the most with these. And what that essentially means is the EXV could not open fast enough to keep up with how strongly the compressor was pulling. So by having this bypass open here, we are reducing how much pull comes on our suction gas over here. So by reducing that suction pull, it gives our metering device time to kind of catch up and get control of the superheat while also reducing the starting current on the motor. And then once the motor comes online, we're stable for a few seconds. It doesn't take long. Uh, you'll hear this female unloader engage. When it engages, that is closing this bypass to where now we have full flow through the compressor. We're no longer going back into uh, the suction from discharge and having a hot gas bypass is basically what's happening here. We do this at startup to minimize the load on the compressor and allow our EXV to open and start feeding the evaporator in a timely manner. And so we're using some of the discharge pressure to activate the diaphragms in here. The solenoid is triggering the spring style diaphragm. And as that diaphragm is actuated, we can then use system pressure to divert gas accordingly to where we can open or close this bypass inside of here. Now, that is your female unloader. Your male load and unload is what's controlling your slide valve. So these are using oil pressure to then uh, push this slide valve puck back and forth in order to control the, com the compressor loading. This is that puck that we're pushing with the oil. So we're stacking oil over here, puck pushes over and moves this slide here back and forth, which changes how much compression the screw bolts are going to be able to give. So all the way to the left is fully unloaded, which means we have basically removed all the oil from this side of the, the puck assembly, and that allows our um, compressor to run at a fully unloaded state. Now, this is not a the train uh, compressors that we're discussing here. This is a handbell. It's a different style, but we have a very similar slide mechanism, so you, you can still kind of see the visual 
and how we have internal oil, oil ports that tie into some solenoids that we can then route and get the oil, use the, the high pressure oil to actuate this piston. Now, the train compressors are not using a spring in them. That's one of the differences here I'll, I'll point out too. So you will not have a spring in there like this compressor does. But this gives you a representation of what's happening inside of here when you see this representation. This is the slide valve getting moved back and forth. This is your puck right here. And so we will actuate these load and unload. These are just electric solenoid coils that will be used to divert how much oil gets either pushed in or removed. So the load solenoid is using high pressure oil to push the slide open. And then we use the unload solenoid to then basically open a relief port to where that oil can then relieve its way back over into the suction pressure. And the process of that oil getting drawn back off into suction uh, pulls that slide back to get it back into an unloaded state. So that is your male load and unload solenoids and how they differ from your female unloader solenoid and what their primary functions are in the circuit. At startup, these will be this will be in a fully unloaded state and your unload solenoid will be activated so that if there is, if this for some reason was loaded at shutdown, it can unload. But until the female unloader is energized and closed and your the system is ready to begin loading which this takes a few minutes sometimes depending on uh, chill water conditions these will not begin to load but you'll hear the clicking okay so when you're standing there by the compressor you'll hear the occasional click 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 uh, at that clicking is this male or it could be the unload but it is these sil these solenoids here getting activated and we're just slowly bumping that uh, slide bit by bit as it's going. So it's just making those small gradual movements. It only gets done once the compressor is started and ready to begin controlling based off of leaving water set point. We're, we're past all of these startup safety checks and everything that, that needs to happen for a stable operation. We've established oil flow. All that's already happened, then these will begin to do their job. And then at shutdown, the unload solenoid gets uh, hard activated and we are going to go through a, a full unload process when the compressor goes to shutdown.